All right, everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Schutz, and I want to welcome you tonight to our meeting about stem cells and regenerative medicine. I'm extremely excited to share with everybody tonight because there's a lot of power in this new therapy, an all-natural therapy that can help your body to regenerate and be well like it did when you were younger. So it's a fantastic science, but it's based on everything natural. No drugs or surgery involved here, all right? With a promise of regenerating your tissue, particularly if you suffer from any kind of arthritis or joint pain. So welcome to the webinar, everybody on camera, and welcome here tonight to everybody in the room. Uh, we wanna thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, first, we wanna show you that we're here to cover some goals tonight. The first goal is to inform. We find that the patients who learn the most about stem cells and how they work get the best results. That's why we have everybody here tonight and we do the webinar to teach people about the stem cell therapy because the more you know, the better results you'll get. We're here to educate you on how the stem cells work and how they will work for you. Everybody's different. So we take a case in the office, we have to evaluate them, make sure that we can treat them. If we can treat them a certain way in the office, we'll do that. If we need to send them out to get more treatment, we do that. But the stem cells are amazing in how they work for our patients. And at the end of this video, we're gonna actually offer you a special price for a consultation. So you can come in the office and possibly get stem cells to see if you're a candidate. About 30% of the people that we get in the office are not actually stem cell candidates at this time. They're too far gone with their arthritis or joint pain, but we can't help them. And if we can't help them, we send them where they need to go to get help. But for sure, you're gonna get help either way coming into our office. So let's get started. First of all, my name's Dr. Brian Schutz. I've been in Central Ohio for 25 years. I've been blessed to share natural health care with different news entities, as you'll see in the, uh, in the slide. And I go and talk about different uh, natural health care concerns. Also, we do a uh, self-defense lecture. You'll see the top middle part of the slide shows me in a sweatsuit. We weren't talking about health care at that time. We're talking about self-defense. And we'd like to share with the Central Ohio people that in a free manner, we actually have a seminar that we do for women. It was a two hour seminar to teach them about self-defense. We don't turn them into Bruce Lee, you know, in the first two hours, but we do help them to learn how to defend themselves in different situations. So if you're interested in that, please call the office. Um, you'll have the number and you can call them and let them know that you're interested in doing that with a group of women that you might have. Now, over the past 25 years, I've had the blessing to be able to treat and meet a lot of people who I actually looked up to when I was young. Being in the realm of natural health care, we, uh, we get to see lots of different things in the office from professional athletes, actors, and regular people all the time. And so these are some of the people that we've had in the office over the years and we've actually met and been able to treat in our office. Now, my stem cell journey started about 12 years ago when I met my girlfriend and she um, was in uh, stem cells where they were helping people who had skin problems. So people who had burns and wounds, they would actually be able to apply the stem cells and the stem cells would heal the tissue without any scarring. And that's very important because if you have tissue that's healed, you want it to be healed normally without scar tissue. And I thought, well, that's fantastic. Can we do that for joints? You know, and they said, well, no, in the United States, we weren't able to treat people with joint problems with these stem cells. I've seen lots of people in the last 25 years who have a lot of scar tissue in their joints and degenerative changes. And when we treat with the stem cells now, we treat without scar tissue. It heals without inside the joints. But at the time, 12 years ago, we couldn't do it. People were going all over the world. We call them medical tourists. They went all over the world to get this stem cell therapy that they couldn't get here in the United States. So I decided I was going to learn about these stem cells where they were helping people with joint problems all over the world. And it turns out Mexico was a great place to go. So I went down to Mexico about five years ago and I went down to see how these stem cells work. And I actually went to a Mexican hospital and people often, you know, when I tell them I went to a Mexican hospital, they ask, well, are there chickens running around and this kind of thing. But it turns out that it was a beautiful place. And all they did there was help people with stem cell therapy. So being very interested, I came in and they welcomed me into the clinic. And I went around and met uh, this person, actually is a guy on the top left of this slide, uh, Dr. Beckwith. He's a pastor at one of the largest churches in the United States. And he had me go in with him when he got his stem cell therapy. And I went in and he said, Brian, before we do this, can you go ahead and manipulate my knees and make sure that they're working properly so I can get the cells and maybe have a better effect? So we did that. He got off the table after his injection, and he felt so much better that the doctor was impressed enough to have me follow him around the rest of the day. So we followed him around the rest of the day, and 
I don't uh, have a license to practice in Mexico. But he said, that's okay, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so <laughs> I followed them around and we treated a lot of people that day and got very good result. So now at that clinic, they actually use somebody like me to go in and make sure the joint is functionally working properly before they treat and actually after they treat the patient. And that's kind of what makes us different in our clinic and how we do it. Because we don't just inject people, we actually make sure the joints are working properly. And that's very important if you want to get the best result. Now, so that's kind of my stem cell journey as far as my learning about it. Then, a couple years ago, I went on skiing on actually uh, January 1st. It was New Year's Day. And it was the first day of the year and I was so happy to go skiing. Great day to ski, beautiful day. Just had a lot of snow the night before. Well, I hit a patch of ice. Within an hour of starting skiing that day and I fell and broke six ribs. Punctured my lung, was taken to the hospital and it was, it was closer than I would like probably to uh, you know, transferring over to the other side. But turns out I got my treatment at the hospital. They told me it'd be three to four months before I could see patients again. I didn't like that idea. I actually started rehabilitating myself within the, as soon as I got home, within two days. And I went back to work in two weeks. But things weren't healing as I would like. And I said, you know what, I gotta go get stem cells. So I found a place here in the United States. I went and I got my stem cell therapy. Within two weeks, my ribs were healed. Within three weeks, I really had very little pain after I did the stem cell therapy. So when things weren't healing correctly, I went and got the stem cells, I got better very quickly. And at that time, I said, well, we have to bring this to Central Ohio. We have to start doing stem cells here. You know, at 50 years old, I wasn't really game on starting a brand new practice after being here 25 years, but decided it's a natural product. There's no drugs or surgery involved. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it here to Central Ohio. So we did. We started treating patients and you're gonna meet some of them tonight on the videos that we're gonna show you. And it's a very, uh, some of them are very impressive in how quick people get results with the stem cell therapy. Again, it's all natural. There's no drugs or surgery involved. Okay, so we like to ask people when they come in, now you know my journey and how it happened for me. We want to get those people's journey. We want to get their goals, not just pain relief. Because pain relief we can do with medication. We can have you go and get pain medication. Of course, every pain medication has a side effect, but you can get pain medication and get out of pain. But it's not gonna allow you to play with your grandchildren again, or go ride your bicycle again, or get back in the gym and do those kind of things you want you to stay active. And it turns out those are very important in keeping you healthy. That activity is very important. When you start to lose it, bad things happen. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So osteoarthritis is the most common disease in human beings. After the age of 20, I can just about find it in everybody, no matter what they do for a living, uh, no matter what kind of lifestyle they have, athletes, regular people, people who work in factories, people who have you know, tough jobs, people of all types, it seems like, have osteoarthritis after the age of 20. Of course, it varies in degrees. But well, being that this is such a prevalent disease, it doesn't kill people by itself. What it does is it causes other morbidities. When you can't move anymore, when you have knees that are osteoarthritic, you can't walk like you used to, or a neck or a back that doesn't work like it should, or even hips or feet. When you can't move like you used to because of the osteoarthritis, then you start to see other changes, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, stroke. We know for a fact that if you can keep moving, you have less chance of any of these chronic degenerative conditions that actually kill you. So these morbidities are very important to manage with movement. So we have to move. We have to get rid of the osteoarthritis and that's the promise of stem cell therapy. We can actually regrow cartilage in people. And after 25 years of working with people who have had these type of injuries, where I could functionally make them move better and that sort of thing, we could never regrow cartilage. That's the promise of stem cell therapy. Okay, so our office, we have an integrated approach. We have a medical staff, which includes our medical doctor, our nurse practitioner, our medical assistant, and then myself. As a chiropractor, I align the joints, I keep them functionally working correctly, so that the new joint can last, hopefully, your rest of your life. Not like other therapies that you do, you have to keep repeating. This is something that can last you the rest of your life. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Now, I want to introduce a video, this is a short video of a TED talk of a lady who treats her patients with the stem cells and she's actually a researcher. And she just says a few very poignant things about how the stem cells work and the promise of stem cell therapy. For the past 12 years, I have been a researcher in the field of regenerative medicine. As a doctor of neuroscience, 
My work investigates whether or not we can use stem cells to help children who've had brain injury or adults with spinal cord injury. Today, I am going to speak with you about how we are changing the future with stem cells. I believe that stem cells are the new internet. Think about it. Think about how the internet completely changed the way that we communicate, the way that we do business, and even the way that we gather data and information. Similarly, I believe that stem cells have the power to revolutionize the whole concept of healthcare. Okay, so she makes a very good point in that video that this process of using stem cell and regenerative medicine can actually revolutionize the whole concept of healthcare. Right now in the United States, we're in the degenerative model of healthcare. We wait till things degenerate and we either drug or we cut it out. That's how medicine works in this country. So that's a degenerative model of thinking and how things are supposed to be treated. Regeneration is totally different and that's what you're here to learn about tonight. I'm gonna to teach you everything you ever wanna know about regenerative medicine and never thought you wanna to know tonight, okay? <laughs> So, another little video I want to show you is from a little school up in the northeast uh, of the country, a place called Harvard. Anybody heard of it? Harvard. Yeah. So, Harvard has a thousand researchers right now working on regenerative medicine. And that's just one school in the country. So, schools all over the country, and actually here in Columbus at Ohio State, they actually use stem cells with certain blood cancers and things of that nature. So, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But I want you to go ahead and take a look at this brief video from Harvard. years ago, we knew there were stem cells in the blood, but very little was known as whether or not that cell type existed in other tissues or could be used to have an impact on a broad range of diseases. The Harvard Stem Cell Institute was formed. It brought together people from a wide range of different areas of Harvard where they could exchange ideas. We could identify novel means for being able to fund their work. We could ask them to really conduct their work in a very different manner, very collaboratively and very much focused on ultimately moving this forward to have an impact on people. And today, we're bringing 10 years of discoveries into the clinic. They give us the promise of having treatments and cures for otherwise intractable conditions. Okay, so what that gentleman says in that video at the end is very important. It says that they're working on cures for otherwise intractable conditions. Things like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, things that we've never been able to treat, chronic disease, now with the stem cells, they're showing that they're making progress in treating and actually curing those conditions because we're not just uh, treating in the degenerative model where we're drugging the people or doing surgery. We're actually regenerating tissue in people to create health. So it's a totally different paradigm than we use, we use in the United States at this particular time. Now, the important thing about stem cells is you have to realize it's where you came from. The stem cell is named that because everything stems from it, kind of like a tree has a stem and everything is the fruit that grows from that tree. So when you were first in your mama's tummy, you were just a bundle of stem cells. That's what you were. And the stem cells then are able to differentiate. That's a term you'll hear a lot tonight. Differentiation means that they can turn into different things. There's about 220 different tissues in your body, from your hair to your skin, to your heart, lungs, every different tissue, about 220 tissues, they can turn into every one of them. And they did. You started out, when you were stem cells, you became what's called a blastocyst. The cells started to differentiate, and you create a brain, and a spinal cord, and then a heart, and then your lungs, your eyes, they all had to come from that little bundle of stem cells. So it's really an amazing process when you think about it. And it happens all through innate intelligence. It's an inborn intelligence these stem cells have. They know where to go and how to fix tissue, how to create it, and how to keep it and maintain it throughout your lifetime, all right? So stem cell therapy is not new in the United States. It's actually been around since the 1950s. In the 1950s, they were only allowed to do it between twins because they were worried you could have a problem with rejection kind of like a blood transfusion, where you could have rejected tissue in somebody and cause a problem. So it's only allowed between twins. Then they found out in 1968 that it didn't matter if you were a family relative, you could still do it. You could get stem cells from somebody in your family and you wouldn't have a problem with rejection. 
So that was a big step forward. But then in 1973, they found out they could use a non-related transfer. And that's, gr that's a great big thing because now we found out you can take my stem cells, I can take your stem cells, we can trade stem cells, just like trading cards. It doesn't matter. Now, in 1979, we had the first unrelated donor for an for a actual condition, which is leukemia. And they treat the bloodborne cancers now in the United States here at the Ohio State University. They're still treating patients with that today. So we're gonna talk a little bit about degeneration. We mentioned it before, but degeneration is using drugs and surgery to help people after they've reached a particular point where their actual degeneration has happened in their body or through accidents or injury, they have things that need to be healed. And what they do is the doctor will go in and maybe do a surgery or, do a, or use a drug, but there's counting on the body to be able to regenerate itself in the end, okay? Whether you patch somebody together or give them medication, you're really counting on just staving off that disease so the body can then heal itself, all right? And that's the, how degenerative medicine works. Regeneration means to rebuild or regrow. And your body actually does that when you're young, it does it very well, okay? When you're a kid and you fall off your bike and scrape your knee, you get up, you put a Band-Aid on it, maybe mama gave it a kiss, and you could go about your day, no problem. Uh, when you get older, when you're 50, it doesn't happen quite that way. And I can vouch for that because just a little while ago, about two months ago, I fell off my bike. And thank goodness, uh, we happened to have some stem cells on hand and we used them on my wound and the wound healed up very quickly. So I was very happy about that because then these young stem cells that we're using have the power to regenerate like they did when you were young. So it's fantastic how that worked to me. That was my second uh, time I used stem cells in my body after my first injury and after that injury, but it works very well. And it does that process called innate intelligence. It's important to know that. They, these cells know what to do, they know how to do it. You just have to let them do their job. Now, in the United States, these are a couple uh, interesting facts. And the first fact is that the US, we are 75% of the world's medications, or actually they're taken. 75% of the world's medications are taken by us in the United States, even though we're only 4% of the world's population, okay? And 18 new prescriptions per year on average for people over 65. Okay, those are some huge statistics. Think about that for a minute, of how deep we're involved in that degenerative model of healthcare. Okay, 18 prescriptions, why is that? Because you take one prescription and it has what? Side effects. Si side effects. And if you have side effects, then you have to take another medication. And what happens to that medication? What has side, side effects. effects. So if you have those side effects again, you have another medication. And all of a sudden you're up to 18 new prescriptions per year. That's an average, okay? So here's how it works, kind of the, the cycle works for degenerative medicine. When people have joint pain, they start taking NSAIDs over the counter, ibuprofen, that sort of thing. When that stops working, they will take stronger ones, maybe, or more of them. So instead of 200 milligrams ibuprofen, maybe now they move to 400, or maybe they go to their medical doctor and get a six or an 800, and they keep moving up. These cause side effects, again, in the kidneys and the liver and that sort of thing. Now, if the pain doesn't go away, they'll go in and they will actually have x-rays done. The x-rays they have taken might show that they have arthritis. Most people have arthritis, we talked about that, over 20 years old. So then they'll get cortisone injections. Now cortisone injections are an interesting therapy. They actually remove inflammation from your joint. That's great, but the inflammation's there for a reason. There's a problem in the joint causing the inflammation. And it's kind of like putting cortisone in a joint. It's sort of like having your fire alarm go off in the house you walk over the baseball bat, smack it off the wall and go back to bed. You're actually leaving the problem, okay? When you leave that problem, it just keeps getting worse and worse, right? And here's the thing about cortisone, when you inject it, it will take away the inflammation, but it also eats the joint. So I asked during the seminars, how many injections can you get in a joint with cortisone in a lifetime? Three. Three, that's what they're recommending, three, because if they go over that, the joint starts to break down. Okay, to the point where it's gonna need replaced. But generally, if you go through this cycle, you go into arthroscopy. This is where they go in and they actually scrape the arthritis out of the joint. Anybody heard of that? Yes. Yeah, so that happens. You go in and you get the joint scraped out, they remove some of the arthritis, they send you on your way, but the problem's still there. So the problem keeps going until eventually you need surgery, okay? And here's a little video about that whole process. We're not gonna spend a ton of time on this because most people are already aware that every medication you take is accompanied by a host of negative side effects. 
We are not telling you to stop taking your medications. For those of you out there who can't walk or can't stand the pain or can't function throughout the day without them, we don't blame you for taking them. Our job is just to educate you and to give you alternative options to true recovery by addressing the underlying causes of your condition and educating yourself about your medications. If you would like to educate yourself about the medications you take, go on WebMD, look up the drug, and you can be informed of the side effects of the prescribed drugs that you're taking. Using them long term is never the ideal solution. Medications trick your body into telling you that you feel better than you actually are, allowing your joints to get worse and worse until you qualify for surgery. Again, there is a time and a place for medications, but using them long term is never ideal. Our job is to give you options so that you can pick if you want to follow a degenerative model or a regenerative model. Your long term option, if you stick with the degenerative model, is surgery. This is a video of a knee replacement surgery. There is a lot of overlap between what is treatable with regenerative medicine and when an orthopedic surgeon clears a patient for surgery, meaning that we've had patients who have been told they needed surgery and we were able to stabilize them back to daily function. You have to remember, most doctors only have one or two tools in their tool belt to treat osteoarthritis. Medication is the first step and surgery is the next, which both fall into the degenerative model. Okay, so as you saw in that video, knee surgeries can be very aggressive, okay? It kind of looks like a hardware store, yeah. the way they use the hammers and everything. Right. You really want to avoid that if you can help it. And it turns out that 120,000 knee surgeries actually go bad every year. Now, when a joint replacement fails, that's one thing. But a lot of times it's because of infection. And when you get an infection in a joint replacement, they actually have to take the joint back out. Then they treat you for three to four months with antibiotics. Then they have to attempt to reinstall the joint again. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be without a joint for three or four months. At that point, you're going to be in a wheelchair. And if you're already older, then you're going to have those problems start to creep up on you like we talked about. You're going to become more overweight. You're going to have more chance of diabetes, heart disease, stroke. All those things go up, not just with the surgery, but afterwards when people have to sit for so long and aren't active and mobile. Okay. So what's the answer to chronic conditions? stem cells. We know that now. The research is all in and we're going to talk about that tonight. The stem cells actually break from the degenerative model of treatment and they promise regeneration of tissue. In our case, what we do in our office, it's going to help with people with joint problems, muscle problems, fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. These type of conditions can be treated successfully with stem cells, all naturally and very quickly. So regenerative medicine is all about the stem cell. And the stem cell is an immature cell in your body. We talked about how you started out just a ball of stem cells. These immature cells can change in anything they want to in the body. So we said there's 220 different types of tissues. They can turn into all 220. Now the ones we use specialize to turn into muscle, bone, ligaments, tendons, cartilage, and those sorts of things. So we're going to talk more about that. There are different types of stem cells. The first type we'll talk about is embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells are never used in the United States and they haven't been for clinical use. They're not even allowed for, um, for research at this point. So there's really no ethical dilemma with using stem cell therapy because we do not get them from aborted fetuses. When I first started researching this, this is my first question. And many people that come to these lectures, they, they ask me, you know, are they from aborted fetuses? Well, no, if they were, I can assure you, I wouldn't be using them because I do have a moral obligation to my patients to not use that kind of thing in my clinic. So they've never been used in clinical medicine in the United States or anywhere else in the world. Now, here's a little video I like to show about the stem cells and exactly what they do. Here's what we know for sure. Regenerative medicine and stem cells do one thing well. They regenerate new tissue through something called replication. It can work in knees, hips, wrists, ankles, hands, the spine, and more. Here's an illustration of how it can help in the knees. Stem cell therapy can regrow new and healthy cartilage in knee joints that have been damaged due to injury or are degenerating with age. Stem cells can develop into many different types of tissues including cartilage and bone. They are delivered through injections directly into the damaged knee. This forms a framework upon which cells can reproduce. 
stem cells multiply and form new cartilage to replace the injured tissue. Okay, so the stem cells regenerate tissue, but here's what differentiates them from other cells in your body and how they can multiply. Because if you have a liver cell, it can produce a lineage of liver cells, but it can't produce stem cells. Stem cells can not only produce the liver cell or the stomach cell or the muscle cell or the cartilage cell or whatever cell it wants to, but it can actually reproduce itself. That's what differentiates it from other cell lines in the body. So the stem cells can actually bank themselves if they're not needed and go live where they live and wait in their body until they need to be used. And then they are called to use in the body, which is a very amazing thing. So this is what a stem cell looks like. We call it a medicinal signaling cell because it actually acts like a conductor of an orchestra. It can bring in everything that's needed to create new tissue in your body. You might need more proteins, you might need more calcium if you're building bone. Whatever you're building, it can actually call those things in so that it can create new tissue. Really an amazing thing. And people you know, look at the cell and they think, well, that, that's pretty ugly. You know, I don't really like how that looks. But when you really research it, it makes a lot of sense and it becomes more beautiful as you look at it. Those little things that stick out from it, like antennae around the cell, those are listening for chemical signals in the body as to where they are needed, which is fabulous. So they're listening for what's needed. Then I like to say those little, those little um, blubs around its outside or whatever you want to call them. I call them like backpacks or even sometimes I call them like Batman has his little utility belt. <laughs> he carries everything he needs with him. Well, this little guy carries everything he needs with him. It has cytokines and growth factors and things that are necessary to grow new tissue and to call in other things that are needed to grow the new tissue. It carries it right on its back. So it's really an amazing thing when you start to look at it, it becomes more and more beautiful, all right? So the function of stem cells, they actually go and they live on your end of your blood vessels, the capillaries. They'll go there and they kind of hang out and they listen. They're using those little antennae and they listen for when they're needed. Let's say that you're up, the stem cells up on your hand in a capillary bed and you stub your toe. Well, this stem cell actually will get the signal that the toe has been stubbed and it will, it'll take off and go down there because it physically wants to start working to, fit, to heal the tissue. And they release what we call a magical soup, which is those cytokines and growth factors that are in the Batman's little utility belt. And it'll release them at the site where the injury happened. So it's actually like a homing device that brings these stem cells where they need to go. It's a chemical signal and that signal is inflammation. So we know when we damage tissue, whether it's chronic injury, you know, from maybe poor posture or something like that, or you have a car accident, whatever kind of injury you have to a tissue, it releases inflammation. That inflammation is calling those stem cells to go down and start doing their job and healing the tissue. So the benefits of these stem cells, number one, they're anti-inflammatory. You'll see in some videos tonight, we're gonna to show you of patients that people actually feel better right away when they get the stem cells many times. And that's because of the anti-inflammatory effect. Now there's no drug involved. This is simply because they naturally are anti-inflammatory and a very strong anti-inflammatory. So you'll get results right away with some people immediately. Now they also modulate the immune system. They help the immune system to, to work better. People with rheumatoid arthritis or other kinds of diseases, fibromyalgia, you'll actually see a better uh, outcome from people that use regenerative medicine and stem cell therapy to treat those type of conditions because it modulates the immune system. Then of course they regenerate tissue. This is really what we're after in our clinic. We want to have the tissue regenerated for people so they can have new joints. You can get a brand new piece of cartilage inside a joint. That's an amazing thing because you can't do that any other way. This is the only way to accomplish that. And then they also help to not break down. They actually help to not have scar tissue after the injury. Okay. That's many times you'll see that you have scar tissue after an injury. And especially if anybody's heard of somebody had low back, maybe a surgery and they have to go in again to do, to remove the scar tissue. Okay. You might've heard of that. Well, when you do use the stem cells, again, just like the skin, they can heal without scar tissue. It can heal your joints without scar tissue as well. Now, the one problem with stem cells is as you get older, there's less of them in your body. Remember I said, when you were young, they heal, you heal very quickly. You don't have to worry about banging your knee or something. You're not going to, you're not going to have to, you know, live with it. If you bang yourself up when you're little, you'll heal. We put ourselves through all kinds of things when we're small, you know, riding skateboards or playing football, all kinds of things. We injure our bodies and they bounce back because the stem cells are very, um, they're all over the body and they're everywhere in high numbers. 
When you get older, there's less of them and less numbers. I'm going to show you how that works. So this is a chart that shows a newborn. In a newborn, we have one in every 10,000 cells is a stem cell. Okay? So out of about 12 trillion cells, every one in 10,000 is a stem cell. When we become a teenager, one in 100,000 cells are now a stem cell. At age 30, it's one in 250,000 cells are a stem cell. At age 50, one in 400,000. And at age 80, it's one in 2 million cells are a stem cell. That is why we age. Technically, if we could keep your stem cell production where it is right now, you would age extremely slowly from this point out. Okay? But with the stem cells being reduced, we age more quickly. And we can't heal up from injuries like we used to because they're not there to do the job. There's, very, there's fewer Batman around your body waiting to do the job. Okay? So, one cell, one stem cell, when you're a baby, it divides every 28 hours. So in 30 days, you have a billion cells. Now think about this, when we inject stem cells into a patient, we'll inject between 1.1 and 1.3 million stem cells, generally, in a large joint. And each one of those cells has a capability to produce a billion cells in 30 days. So that's a large number, yes? About a one with almost 20 zeros after it. Okay? At age 35, one cell will divide every 48 hours. So in 30 days, you have 32,000 cells. Many less. Okay? At age 65, one cell takes 60 hours to divide. So in 30 days, you have 200 cells. So we go from a billion when you're young, each cell can produce a billion. So now you're 65, each cell can only produce 200. And you might be happy like this guy in this slide, but your stem cells are not producing like they used to when you were young. Okay, so there are different unique stem cell therapies. And I want to explain those to you now. The first one is autologous. Autologous stem cells mean they come from you. Okay, so they take your stem cells out of the body, they then spin them down, and then they re-inject them into the body. But what's the problem with that technique? Same old cells, that's right. So those cells are going to divide more slowly. So we see less outcomes with people who use this type of therapy. And I'll tell you this, we had a patient come in the office. One of our first patients was a patient with an elbow problem who had PRP put in their body, which is a stem cell type therapy you'll hear about. It's an autologous therapy where they take cells out of your body, they spin them down, they put the growth factors back in the joint. The same person. Well, she only had about a 50% result. She went through all this, you know, harvesting cells and being injected. And then she only got a 50% result. Well, she came to us actually because she had a knee problem. Then she said, you know, she wanted to use the younger cells. So she did. And she's a tennis player and she couldn't play tennis anymore because of her knee. Her elbow was bothering her. So she got the injection into her knee. Two weeks later, she's back to playing tennis, pain-free. Then did the elbow. Two weeks later, the elbow is pain-free. That's the difference between young cells and old cells. It's kind of like riding around a Model T or a brand new Ferrari. It's a total difference in how these cells can work. Okay? So, autologous stem cells, they take them from the bone marrow or the fat, they harvest them, they clean them, spin them down, and then inject them back into the patient. This process is expensive, it's a surgical procedure. There's lower potency, of course, because the cells aren't young, they're older. Now, if you're 20 and you have this done, it might work better. But the point is generally 20 year olds don't need this kind of therapy because their stem cells are still multiplying. But when you're 50, 60, 70, again, you're taking cells out and one cell can only make 200 cells a month and you're putting those back in, that's why your results aren't gonna be as good. Okay, and here's how they remove the stem cells. They use a trocar and they go into the pelvis generally to get the bone marrow. They get the bone marrow out, then they spin it down and they put it back into the patient. So the next type of therapy we'll talk about is from afterbirth tissue. Now this is from a healthy delivery. They test rigorously the mother, the father, the baby, and the tissue, and they can use amniotic tissue or placental tissue to get the stem cells to inject into the patient. And this is a good therapy. It works for a lot of people. And the only problem with this therapy is there's not as many mesenchymal stem cells, or the kind of stem cells that do what we want to, in the amniotic or placental tissue. There's not as many. Okay, that's the only drawback from this type of tissue. Other than that, it's a pretty good therapy. Now, the type of therapy we use and we recommend for people in our clinic is the stem cell from the Wharton's jelly of the umbilical cord. Okay? So you take a healthy C-section delivery. You don't want to wait around on this because you never know how long it's going to take to get the cells. So they actually schedule C-section deliveries 
the person can actually, she can decide, the person giving birth can decide whether she wants to donate her cells, if she wants to keep them for herself, or if she wants to throw them away. Okay, they have that option. And we hope that they want to donate them so we can then gather the cells and harvest them and then put them into our patients so they can create new tissue. The Warden's jelly, though, consists more of just the stem cells. There's all kinds of growth factors in the tissue. So you might get 1.3 to 1, 1.1 to 1.3 million stem cells in an injection, but you also get 100 million other cells that are helping the stem cells do their job in that injection. Okay. So we know the controlled quantities. We can measure how many stem cells we get here. Not like when we pull them out of, the, of a person. We can't measure the amount of cells we get. With the Wharton's jelly cells, we can actually measure the amount of cells that we get. And that's important. We know that they're also very young cells. And there are really no concerns with these cells causing any rejection in the body. Okay? So it's fantastic to be able to use the Wharton's jelly stem cells. Here's a little study from Australia. This is from May 28th of this year. And it shows that people who had the stem cell therapy with the mesenchymal stem cells actually had not only regenerated tissue and reduced their pain, but they had a 290% increase of quality of life. That's what we're really after with this. We want people to have an increase in quality of life so they can enjoy themselves and their life can be more productive and happy. So that's a very good study, a new study on the research involved with stem cells. Here's from the FDA's website. It says adult stem cell research shows promise and FDA sets path for stem cell therapies. Okay, here's a very interesting case. Now, when I was at uh, the place in Mexico I went, I actually saw a person who was a paraplegic. They could not use their legs. They got their legs back from using stem cell therapy. They were able to walk again. This young man's a quadriplegic and he's the first one that actually got his range of motion back in his upper extremity. Here he is lifting weights after he was injected with the stem cells into his spinal cord after a spinal cord injury. And you know, Christopher Rees was fighting to try to get stem cells legal in this country because he had, you know, Superman. He was big time actor and a really popular fellow and he couldn't get the stem cells approved in the United States at that time because the drug company was so in control of the healthcare in this country or disease care, if you want to call it that. It's not really healthcare. But he, um, this young man was actually quadriplegic and got his upper range of motion back lifting weights now after getting the stem cell therapy. And here's a book I like to share from Dr. Reardon. This is a book called MSC or mesenchymal stem cells. This book has 800 different references for treating 44 different conditions using stem cells. Okay. And one of them being osteoarthritis. So it's a very good book. It's a very long read, but it's a very good book on stem cell therapy. Okay. So now I want to go over some frequently asked questions with stem cell and regenerative medicine. First one is what about the FDA? Now remember, this is a natural therapy. There's no drug involved. What the FDA does, they oversee the labs who harvest the stem cells and then cryopreserve the stem cells. Then they send them to sites like mine in my office where we actually have our own cryopreservation chamber to store the stem cells. And they oversee that whole process to make sure the cells are harvested properly. The cells are tested to make sure there's nothing dangerous or no kind of disease tissue in the cells or anything like that. We have a healthy cell to get put into a patient. And then they make sure that they're cryopreserved properly. They have the proper equipment to keep those cells. So that's the FDA's role in stem cell therapy. Now, is it safe? Over 250,000 different injections in people at this point with zero rejections. So we have the National Institute of Health, the Association of Tissue Banks and Blood Banks that also oversee to make sure that this tissue we're taking is very healthy and viable for our patients. Now, how fast do you see results? Nationwide, it's an 80 to 85% success rate with stem cell therapy. And we're very picky in our office of who we treat. I said at the beginning, we generally have about 30% of people we can't treat in the office, so we have to send out because it's been too long and too far gone for them. And when we first started doing this, it was kind of like a mass unit. I mean, people came in, we could maybe only see half the people that we could help because they were so far gone. On this end of it, now that we've been doing it for a while, what we find is that people are coming in before they get too bad. They're starting to hear about stem cells and they want to come in before they get too bad. So we actually have people come in where normally in a bad osteoarthritic joint, we might treat with a full CC of stem cells. Some of these people come in now, they only need a half because their joint is not degenerating enough for a full CC. That saves them money 
and their healing time is going to be quicker. It's an amazing uh, proposition when you think about the younger generation now coming in earlier before they get too bad. Now, generally, people will see results immediately, like we said, from the anti-inflammatory effect. But it really depends on how bad your joint is. If your joint isn't too bad, you're going to have results very quickly. If your joint is worse, you might take 24 hours to 7 days to start seeing results in reduction of pain and increased range of motion. Others might be 3 to 9 weeks. These are people that have really are on the edge where we might not have, be able to treat them. We try to bring them back. They might take longer. And of course, we want function results in 6 months. That means at 6 months, we take an x-ray of the joint we've treated and we expect to see that joint increase. So we know cartilage is growing inside that joint. And we know when you're young, you replenish your joints every six to nine months. That's how long it normally takes in the adult human to replace their joint. When you're young, when you're older, it doesn't happen so quickly. But we know now we put the young stem cells in, that's their capability. They can heal like they did when you were a younger person. Okay, so here's a study, because we, people ask me all the time, well, how long does treatment last? You know, people say, well, I feel great. So how long am I gonna feel great? We know that the stem cells keep producing new stem cells for at least seven years, okay? So, if we, it takes six to nine months to grow a new joint, and these cells are growing for at least seven years, then we know that at the end of seven years, you've got that brand new joint still that you had when we first started. And if we teach you how to use that joint properly, and we keep that joint properly aligned, then how long do you think it should last? The rest of your life? Yeah, forever. No matter how long you live, that joint being new and working like it should and taken care of properly should last forever. Because let's say you're 60 years old and you come and you have an arthritis and we grow a new joint. Well, then it should at least last another 60 years, right? Or even better, because we know we're at least getting seven years out of those stem cells, at least. But they do stay on the job for at least that time and hopefully even longer than that. But these people who did this study, actually they took histologic samples, so they went in and took a little piece of cartilage out of their knees to analyze it over seven years. I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> you know, that, I would want, I feel good, great, I feel good, you know, <laughs> but they're part of a study, so they probably got the stem cells for a reduced rate or something, and they had to go through this pain every year to get the stem cells, or to get the cartilage taken out to evaluate it. Okay, so if you go to research stem cells online, you can go to PubMed or clinicaltrials.gov, or I like to tell people, just go to Google, put in any disease you want, and put stem cells after it. It's the most researched topic in medicine around the world at this time. So you're going to find things about every disease. Now, we don't treat for every disease in our clinic or in the United States yet with stem cells, but around the world, you'll see that happening. So here are some favorable results with stem cells in different studies from around the world. And you'll see, we know the stem cells are good for inflammation. That's the first thing they do. So you see the failed surgeries, post-operative pain, heart disease, liver disease, autism, stroke. These are different autoimmune conditions and inflammations in the body that the stem cells can help. And you'll see in the research from around the world. Autoimmune problems. They help with rheumatoid arthritis, Parkinson's disease, and multiple sclerosis. Again, we're not treating for those in this country right now, but they are treating for us around the world. And we know the stem cells regenerate tissue. And on that side, we see that the spinal cord can be regenerated, arthritis can be regenerated in the joints, tissues like your ligaments and tendons. Also, the discs, when you have a bulging disc or an injured disc, it can regenerate that tissue as well. And that's the kind of thing that we're using in our clinic to help regenerate those tissues. Now, what conditions can be best affected by the stem cells? Really, pretty much every joint in the body. The one joint we haven't done in the body is a TMJ yet. We haven't done one of those yet. We've done just about every other joint in the body. So they really, we see, depending on how bad the patient is, if we find out that we can help them, we know how long it'll take for them to get better with the stem cell therapy. And then we know we can treat just about any joint in the body. Now, the most common joint we treat are knees. Knees are interesting because they have the joint at the two longest bones in the body. They come together at the knee joint and it's weight bearing. Well, what we find is about 80% of our patients that have knee problems is because they have a foot problem that over the years started to wear the knee joints unevenly. And when that happens, osteoarthritis is a result. So knee joints are the most common problem because the two longest joints creates a lot of torque and they have to sit on the feet. And if the feet have a problem, they cause knee problems. So that's generally what we see the most. But we see shoulders, we see hips, we see feet. Here's an interesting example of a knee problem. Now, on the left picture, you will see 
that there are two joints. One on the left is a normal knee. The one on the right, in the left-hand picture, is a knee with osteoarthritis. And if you see, down below the R there, there is a place in the joint where the two bones have come together pretty much. This is what we call bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. The dark space that's in the middle on the left picture of the left joint, you'll see that there is black on both sides of that joint. That is where we have full cartilage on both sides. But the one, the picture on the left, but the joint on the right, we see that those two bones are coming together. And there's a whitening of the bones right where they come together. That's where the bones are wearing on each other and that bone on bone arthritis is set in. Okay, that's called a reactive sclerosis. The bones get more dense when they hit each other over time. Okay, so we see that's going on. Now that's February 27, 2017. Look at May 2nd, 2017 in the same patient. You'll see in that picture, on the right hand picture now, you'll see the left joint looks good just like it did before and the right joint now on the right hand side where the bones were touching each other, they're no longer touching. In that brief amount of time, not only is their cartilage growing, but the whitening of the surfaces of the bone has started to diminish. That's an amazing feat to have somebody heal that way in such a brief period of time. Okay, so now I wanna show you another brief video that's gonna have a lady who treats uh, different patients with stem cells in her clinic. She actually was doing a TED Talk. They haven't invited me to do a TED Talk yet, so I like to show hers because I think she does a very good job of summing up how the stem cells work in her patients. So I was researching the regenerative therapies available to us in this country, in the United States, and while I was doing this, a friend of mine happened to call me He's 54 years old and he said, I fell off my bike a couple weeks ago and I can't lift my arm. The MRI says I have a complete tear of one of my rotator cuff tendons, something I see every day. Two top orthopedic surgeons in New York told him the only way to fix this was to surgically repair it. And he, they were right. When you have complete tear of a tendon, you have to surgically reattach it. My friend was obviously looking for a non-surgical option. So I looked at his MRI first and I thought I saw a tiny strand of ten tendon still attached. This was important because it would give me the substrate to work with. So I went back to my research and I started looking at the hierarchy of regenerative treatments available to us. The first one is something called platelet-rich plasma, which very simply is drawing blood from a person, spinning it to concentrate the growth factors, and then you re-inject that into the same person. This had promise, but I didn't think it was gonna be strong enough for this magnitude of injury. So the second level in the hierarchy of treatment is what we call either fat or bone marrow derived stem cell treatments. It's a same day treatment. We're allowed to do it in the US. You extract a small amount of fat or bone marrow from the person. You put that product through a very sophisticated centrifugation process, which concentrates the stem cells and the growth factors, and then you re-inject that into someone. And I thought, this is really getting a lot closer to what might work for him. But then I remembered what I said, that inverse relationship between age and the number and potency in, of the cells. And I thought, 54-year-old cells, that might not work. So I went to the next level in the hierarchy of treatment, which is very different, and it's the use of postnatally derived tissue, amniotic or placental or umbilical cord. Labs around the US are permitted to isolate the growth factors from that hours-old product, and then we can inject that into somebody. And I thought, hours-old product versus 54-year-old stem cells, it was kind of a no-brainer in my mind. And so I went back to my friend and I said, look, there is this product from, I'm gonna use from amniotic tissue growth factor. Uh, I'm very comfortable with the safety profile of it, but I have to tell you, it's super expensive. It will likely not be reimbursed by insurance and it may not work. What do you think? And so my friend laughed and he said, sure, let's try it. What do I have to lose? So I injected him with these growth factors and within two weeks, he had 30 degrees of movement. Within six weeks, he had full range of motion. This is unheard of in the world of sports type injuries like this, but it was only a single case. And I had to repeat this in other cases. So the next case I did was a gentleman in his 70s that I've treated for many years with polio who had end stage bone on bone osteoarthritis of both of his knees and he was facing joint replacements. We both knew that with his history of polio, he would end up in a wheelchair if he had these surgeries. So again, we looked for a non-surgical option. I did the same thing with him, and within weeks, he was walking pain-free, and he continues to walk pain-free three years later. 
I have since repeated this in dozens of cases with pretty remarkable results. So I just want to say before I conclude that first of all, every tissue and cell structure that I've been talking about today is harvested from after birth. These are products that would be thrown in the trash. They would be discarded. So there should be absolutely no ethical dilemma with the use of these tissues or cells. The last thing I want to say in summary is that I absolutely believe that the future of medicine lies in the use of biologic agents to regenerate, not synthetic agents to palliate. I also believe that we can ease the aging process, and I believe in what could be. And I'd like to leave you with one quick video. This is a patient of mine with muscular dystrophy who a year and a half before two stem cell treatments had no balance and coordination and was quickly losing her ambulatory ability. This, this is what could be. All right, so this doctor, I'm very interested in what she said because she goes ahead and breaks down the whole process of how the cells work in different patients as she's treated. Now, at the end where she shows a video of this person skiing, a lot of people say, well, Dr. Brian, why don't you get one of those trikes so you can ski so you don't hurt yourself like you did last time? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, I, don't, uh, I don't have one of those, but I didn't have MS to start with, so I'm, I'm kind of glad I don't have to use one of those, but I'm actually thinking about trying it sometime just so I wouldn't break my face when I get older, all right? So now I wanna show you some patients that we've treated in the office with the stem cell therapy. This first patient is Jeff. Jeff has been a patient of mine for years, but he's had knee pain for 10 years. He was overweight, he couldn't exercise or do things because his knees were hurting. So he started to suffer from those morbidities like diabetes and such, and heart disease. And he was a higher risk for stroke because he couldn't move. So Jeff came in one day and he got the stem cells injected. Now when he came in, he had two knee braces and he had a cane. And I had to help him onto the table. He couldn't get on the table by himself. We took the braces off, we injected Jeff. Now Jeff got off the table and I was about 10 feet away. He walks over to me and he just grabs me and hugs me. And he's crying at this point. And I was taken aback by this. And I said, well, buddy, we really should videotape this because this is remarkable. He had no pain right off the table. So I went ahead and grabbed my camera and this is what happened. Well, but now, come on and walk out here. How's it feeling, buddy? Oh, it's amazing. How fast he is. Well, it's been a, it's been a long yeah, time since you had your injection. How long has it been? <laughs> Three minutes, Three five minutes. Go ahead and walk down the hall that way. And now, see, don't go skiing. Yeah. And don't be skiing. Yeah, I know. You are, you are not returned to your 25 South year old. I'm thinking about my baseball now. That would be bad. All right. Yeah. So what do you think, buddy? It's amazing. All right, good deal. Okay, so we had to warn Jeff when he started moving around that he wasn't to do things that could hurt himself. I'm going to talk about a patient who actually did that in just a few minutes. But the next patient we have is John. Now, John is a firefighter, obviously, but he wasn't able to work on the medic truck or the fire engine anymore because his knees were so bad. He was a runner. I don't like running. I don't like running on pavement or asphalt. It's really hard on your joints. As what I do for a living, you don't want people doing that because it causes issues as they get older. What happens is when the knees start to go, then they can't do things that, keep them, that kept them healthy, like having their heart beat fast and do cardiovascular exercise. So they start to have these degenerative conditions. Well, John came in and he told me he could not even go down his steps in his house. He had to go down backwards. Okay, so he might look extremely healthy, but this actually video was taken a week after his stem cell injections in his knees. So he was actually back on the medic truck at this time. It only took a week to get him back. And so we did this brief video talking about, especially with the steps, the steps have me interested. I mean, you can't climb the steps and come down the steps in your house. That's a huge issue for you. So we wanted to help him to where he could do that again. And this is a brief video about what happened. This was taken a week after the injections. Okay, so tell us about how your knees were before your injections. Very painful. I could not walk down steps. I couldn't walk a straight line. I waddled when I walked and just constant pain in them. So you were having to go down the steps backwards, you told me, right? That is correct. Right. Okay, so um, how has this changed you to have the stem cell injections? Uh, I'm probably about 90% pain-free. It's getting better. I walk a lot straighter. I can go down steps now. Um, obviously, I'm not running or anything like that at this point. We don't want you to run. I know. <laughs> but uh, no, That's what every, caused every, your knees to go in the first place. <laughs> but it, every, everything's great. I mean, I feel much better and just better, better overall day. Complete day is better. 
Fantastic. Okay, so this is one week after, and we did this the day that you actually had the injection. We came out here and walked down these steps, right? That is correct. So let's go ahead and do it again. Come on down. Okay, so John, obviously he's back in, he can go down the steps again and do things he wants to again. I had to uh, tell you this little story though. We warn patients not to do too much the first few days because sometimes people feel really good and they want to go do crazy things. Well, John sent in one of his friends who's an, also a firefighter and he's about 50 years old. He got his right knee injected. He felt so good. I get a phone call a week later that he decided he was going to go out and go to the track with his kids who ran high school track and he was going to try hurdles. Now he's never tried hurdles before, but he figured he feels like Superman at this point. He's going to go try the hurdles. So I get this phone call that he went in the first hurdle. He didn't make it over. Go figure. He landed right on his right knee. Okay. Then we just treated. Now I would rather him have done that than the left knee because the cells are going to try to go to the area of injury. So he went out, he fell down on the right knee, which is the one that was injected. So the cells, I said, look, you did the right thing by landing on that knee, <laughs> but don't do it again. I said, but the cells are there. The tissues will heal. Cause he thought he might have to get re-injected to get the knee to heal back, but he didn't. And then he healed back. He actually came in and got the left knee done later on. And uh, he didn't try to run track after. So that was a good thing. Okay. Now the last patient I want to show you today, he had a low back problem. This patient, he was a golf instructor and a, a coach at a local high school for the golf team. And he had to give up golf and give up his love of coaching these children because of his low back pain. He came in and we evaluated him and I told him two months. I said, you give me two months after looking at his x-rays and everything, two months after the stem cell injection, and I'm going to take you to top golf. We're going to hit golf balls. He said, no way. There's no way it's going to happen. I said, really, it's going to happen. I really, after seeing your case and I've known what happens with these cells with other patients, I think you'll be able to do it. And so he agreed. He said, okay, two months. And I started him off doing exercises and doing functional things to help his back, then swinging clubs at home a little bit and that sort of thing. And it led to this. This was exactly two months after his stem cell injection in his lower back. Okay, so then after this, we're leaving the parking lot and he still couldn't believe that he was able to hit a golf ball again like he used to two months after the therapy. So, but again, now he, uh, he just got back from a trip to Europe and he was able to hike and do all the things he wanted and he's playing golf regularly at this point. So we're very happy for him. Now, another uh, question I get a lot is how many treatments will I need? If you, we decide that a joint is a candidate for stem cell treatment and therapy, then we say one, one time treatment. You should not need more than one injection because we know those cells live for at least seven years. They're producing what they need to produce. They're healing your tissues for at least that amount of time. So you should need one injection per joint. Now, if you get one injection in a knee joint, but you also want to treat your shoulders or your feet or some other joint or your back or neck, you're going to have to get those injected separately. Okay. The stem cells we treat in a joint, they generally stay there. Some of them do escape and they go do a little fun things, other places in the body, <laughs> but they generally say we put them unless we put them in muscular tissue. And then they tend to be dispersed more people with fibromyalgia, people with neck pain, low back pain. We can treat a larger area because we're treating into the muscle where the cells can actually branch out and do more. So generally you need one treatment per joint. And now, like I said, we're getting people that come in who might only need a half a CC for a large joint because the joint's not that deteriorated yet. Or they might need a half a CC of injection instead of a full CC because they're treating a small joint like a finger or an elbow or joints in the feet, that sort of thing. They might need less stem cells. So we'll use less stem cells for that patient. Now does the treatment hurt? Has anybody in here had an injection before, yes. right? So an injection can be tender, right? But what we do in the office is we use a freeze spray that numbs the area and it's all natural. Okay. It's not a drug because you can't give drugs with the stem cells because if you give an anti-inflammatory type drug with the stem cells, then the stem cells don't know what to do. They need that inflammation to be called to where they need to do their work. 
So we don't want to do that. So we use this freeze spray and it's very good at reducing pain for patients. Generally, people don't complain at all about their injections. Um, if anything, they say they feel a pressure when they get the shot. And that's really about it. It's not like cortisone where they use a huge needle because cortisone is a gel and it takes a large gauge needle, a wide needle, a bore to get into the joint and put that cortisone in. The stem cells aren't like that. They're more viscous, they're more liquid. So they can go in easily through a smaller needle, okay? So it's really an easy procedure that doesn't cause pain. And who does the injection? Generally a physician's assistant or nurse practitioner. In our office, we use a nurse practitioner, Monica. She has a lot of experience, more than just about anybody else in Ohio. And her medical assistant is Wendy. So they're very nice people and they're very good to work with in the office. And here's another key. I said before that it's an 80 to 85% success rate nationwide for the stem cell treatment. Well, if you use ultrasound guidance, you're getting that 80 to 85%. If you don't use ultrasound guidance, you're gonna get 75%. So you wanna make sure you go to a clinic where they're using the ultrasound guidance to put the needle in the proper position to be accurate with the injection material. You also wanna make sure that they're using a company who counts the cells and you know where the cells come from. Are they from the umbilical cord? Or are they from the amniotic sac or placenta? Because we know that the umbilical cord cells are the best. So you want to make sure your company you get is using those cells. Good questions to ask when you go in for stem cell therapy. Now, how long does the treatment take? It's interesting. It's an in-office procedure. After we decide if you're a candidate, it'll be a 15 minute procedure in the office to get the cells injected. You go in, you set up the ultrasound, you clean the joint, you inject the stem cells. Then the patient is up and mobile. There's no downtime. It's not like surgery where you have to not do anything. You're up and moving like you saw in our patients. Right away, you're up and moving. So there's zero downtime and we expect clinically improved function, meaning full range of motion in one to three months. And that's my job at that point to make sure that that happens. And that's why we bring you into the office to make sure that we get that functional improvement in the joints. Are there side effects? Side effects, really, there are none. But if you do have a sulfa allergy, you take a baby Benadryl before you get your therapy. That's how that works. Before you get the stem cells, you take a baby, uh, baby Benadryl. So the difference in our office, we do use the ultrasound. That brings us up to the 80 to 85% success rate that we see nationwide. We try to go beyond that. Our patients actually get six weeks of post care with our office to make sure their joints are functioning like they should. It's included in the injection price. There's very few places in town or in the country that are actually doing that. But after what I saw in Mexico, that's, I knew I wanted to do that with my patients when we started doing this therapy in the office. We also are research driven. We take care to make sure that our patients are improved in their activities of daily living and how they feel and how they're able to do things around the house or whatever they want to do. After six weeks of care, we check that. So we're making sure we follow up with our patients that way. And is it covered by health insurance? People want to know, well, can I get this covered by health insurance? Unfortunately, it's not. Now, I do know that there's some of the, um, the Christian-based uh, health shares, that kind of thing, where they are paying for stem cell therapy. Now, I just heard that. So if you have that kind of MediShare type thing, it possibly could be covered. But they're outside of the government program. Anything under the government program, which is Medicare and all your commercial insurance payers, they do not cover stem cell therapy because it's natural. There's not a drug involved. So think about if you went into your medical doctor and you say, you know, doc, I'm feeling kind of low. You got any herbs I could take, like some with any or something that could help me feel better and maybe cover by my insurance. I mean, can you imagine saying that to a medical doctor? Right. They're going to look at you like you have three heads. Right. They're not, it's not covered because it's a natural product. Okay. So it's not covered by insurance. And here's the thing. We, this is the one thing that would have to change for anything natural to be covered. And it's not going to happen anytime soon because we know that 75% of the medications in the world are given to our population in the United States. The drug companies have a strong hold on the disease care system. Here's what Medicare says about treatments that are good for you. It says a treatment plan that seeks to prevent disease, promote health, and prolong and enhance the quality of life, or therapy that is performed to maintain or prevent deterioration of a chronic condition is deemed not medically necessary. What? Yes, that's what I said when I first read that. But it's true. They don't think if anything's good for you or preventing chronic conditions, again, degenerative model here, okay? It's saying that it's not medically necessary. Anything good for you. 
So we kid around at the office, we call Med I Don't Care mm. instead of Medicare. <laughs> Because okay? you're paying into the system your whole life and you have no real choice of what you want to do with your health when you go into that system. So it's not really fair. Now, a cost comparison for stem cells compared to a replacement of a joint. A shoulder joint is going to cost you between $22,000 and $26,000 nationwide. A knee replacement, $46,000 to $76,000 to do that joint. Insurance deductibles and out-of-pocket expenses for you are going to be between $4,000 and $15,000. Okay, to have that done, plus you're talking about a lot of downtime and rehabilitation, that sort of thing, with this type of modality. The stem cell injections across the country go between 4,500 and 12,500 per injection. Now, at 12,500 is California. Yeah. Everything's more expensive in California. Mm -hmm. It's the same cells. We get the cells from the same place or even closer to California or to us, but we get them at a much better rate, I guess. Mm -hmm. but uh, it's the same price, but we have a lot less um, costs involved with our clinic than they would in California, I guess. So we can offer them at a lot cheaper price here in Ohio. For us in our clinic, we, uh, for one cc of a stem cell injection, it's $4,500. Okay, we do tell people, if you see this webinar or if you come to one of these functions, we give you a discount because we know that you're going to have better results than someone who doesn't get this information. Did you learn a lot tonight so far? Okay, good, good. So we charge $39.99 for a 1cc injection in the office. That's for a large joint. Smaller joint, it's a smaller price. Also, if you have multiple areas that you want to get injected, you get cost discounts. Okay, but this is for the first uh, 1cc injection is $39.99. And remember, that does include six weeks of post care in the office. And I'm going to show you what that includes in just a minute. So the next step, if you want to see if you're a candidate for stem cells, is to get an examination. In that examination, we're going to take your case history, your past medical history. We're going to actually do an orthopedic and physical examination of the joints that you want us to look at. And we'll look at all the joints you want us to look at. Sometimes, so I've got eight joints I want to look at. So we might break it up into two examination times. We want one day, one a couple days down the road. Because we actually not only are going to examine the joint, we're going to take x-rays of the joints that you want us to look at. So when you're in your exam, we're going to do a full examination on that joint. We're then going to discuss treatment options that you have, whether it's with us or we have to refer you for your problems if they're too far out of our scope and we can't treat. Then we're going to answer your question and we're actually answer any questions you have. Then we're going to give you cost um, and payment plans. Okay? There's actually payment plans you can use to break the cost up for the therapies if you want to receive them, if you're a candidate. So the cost of an examination in our office is $299 normally, okay? If you come in the office and you get an exam, it's $299. That includes your x-rays of any joint you want us to look at. And again, we might break that up into different days if we have to, if we're looking at a lot of joints. But the $299 cost comes down to $99 if you watch this webinar or if you come to one of these seminars. So $99, we're going to look at any joint you want, as many as you want for that cost. Okay, for just $99. So if you have four joints, $99. You have eight joints, $99. Again, we might break it up into a couple days because we don't want to take x-rays that many joints in one day and examine that many joints one day. It's not time, uh, it's time prohibitive, we'll say. Okay, so we might break that up, but it's still the same cost for you. Now that means if you are a candidate for stem cells, you're going to save over $700 by getting this information. We had a patient call from Maryland who wanted to come. They had a person they knew they got treated in our office. They wanted to come up and get injected. And I had to tell them the price was full price because they haven't been to one of our lectures. Now that we're doing this webinar, they'll be able to see this and then they'll be able to come up and get their exam and get injected and save the money. That, and that'll, cost, that'll pay for their trip at least to come up here. So that's a good savings. And also, if you pay the $99 for your examination, and you're a candidate, we actually take that price off the cost of your stem cells. So that helps with the cost as well. Okay, so the difference in our office, the pre and post care we do with our patients is really what makes a difference. We use the ultrasound to be sure we were accurate in placement of the needle. This makes sure that it's an easy procedure because we can see any kind of arthritis we have to work through with the ultrasound. It also means that we're effective in putting in the right place. The pre and post care actually starts with the collagen that we give you to start taking before your injection so we can give your body what it needs to start building new tissue. Then we do manipulation to assure that the joint is functioning properly and properly aligned, which just makes sense. You don't want to have a joint that moves this much and put stem cells in because it's going to heal here. 
If the joint can move the full range of motion, that's where the stem cells are going to perform. And they're going to heal that full joint at that point instead of just a little bit. So we like to make sure we have that joint properly aligned. We then use pulse DMF therapy. We have found through research that pulse DMF therapy actually helps stem cells stimulate and grow faster. It brings a new blood flow to the area and the stem cells are in the blood. So they get to come in the area and work faster when we use the pulse DMF therapy. So we kind of do that for every one of our patients so that they get the best results possible. We're trying to step above that 80 to 85% success rate with our clinic. Okay, so at this point, we like to ask people, how would restoring your joints and relieving your pain change your life? What would it do for you? Would you be able to move more? Would you be able to go play with your grandchildren more or go ride your bicycle again? What activities could you do to improve your health overall if you didn't have that darn pain nagging you all the time, right? So you think about that because when people come in our office, you'll see like we did with our patients, there's specific things they want to do. You know, the first patient, he wanted to lose weight and get healthier and he's on his way. The second patient that you saw, the fireman, he wanted to get back being a firefighter again. And then the last patient wanted to get back to golf again. Whatever everybody's why is, we try to make sure they get there using the, the stem cell therapy and what we do in our office. Okay, so this little video I want to show you, a couple short videos now in closing. Anybody remember Mel Gibson? Yes. Show of hands. Okay, so Mel Gibson did these movies called Lethal Weapon back in the 90s, right? Where he would throw his shoulder out of place. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, it caught up with him. So he went down to Panama to start getting stem cell therapy for his shoulders. But the way he started is his dad was actually very sick. His dad was 92 years old and he was very sick. He was on death's doorstep at the Mayo Clinic. And of course, Mel Gibson has a lot of connections. He has doctors at the Mayo Clinic. He knew this guy and he was treating his dad and he said, hey, you know, your dad's about to pass. He's not gonna make it. He, we can't really do surgery because he's too far gone. And this is a video about what happened. This is seven years after his dad was treated with stem cells, okay? Movie star Mel Gibson is a regular visitor to the Stem Cell Institute. He has treatments for a shoulder injury and he's become an advocate of stem cell therapy. Mel's father, Hutt Gibson, had his life transformed by going to Panama. His treatment pulled him back from the edge of death, aged 92. Seven years later, he's thriving. Well, he was pretty, he was pretty old. He was 92 and I, you know, he wasn't doing too well. And I took him to the, to the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. And uh, they said, you better leave him here. He's going to be dead. And I'm like, ah, oh, really? So they kept him there 10 days, stabilized him, identified a number of problems. Um, just wearing out, you know, the kidneys, the, you know, he had some congestive heart stuff and lung stuff. and. Uh, um, various other things, um, you know, his hip was, you know, hurting, he was not ambulatory and he was um, in a lot of pain and pretty listless and sick. Um, you know, night, you know, what do they call it, night terrors or like, you know, where he wasn't quite lucid. And, um, but all, all this stuff was draining his energy and affecting his mind and, you know, and it was the full kind of old indignity, you know, the 92 years of age. So um, I figured, you know, if he could just get his hip under him and get and get moving again. And they said, well, you shouldn't really, he's pretty old to be doing an operation like that. You know, the, the recovery will probably, it'll take so much for him to recover. He'll probably, uh, that'll, that might take him out. And I'm like, oh, well, we can't do that. And then my brother said, look, why don't you try, uh, I got this website of this like adult stem cell thing. I'm like, what do you mean, what, adult stem cells? Yeah. So I asked a, a doctor friend of mine, um, you know, what he thought about that. And he says, stay away from those guys. It's unproven. He's like, uh, it's, you know, down in Panama, it's lepers and banana boats and three legged dogs. And I'm like, well, you know, you're exaggerating. And it turns out that he was. He, but I said, look, can we talk to these guys? He said, I'll talk to them. So, I got the, this friend of mine, Brad, who was a doctor uh, at Mayo, and uh, uh, we spoke to them for an hour, and it was interesting because he asked them questions I never would have thought of. I mean, what is a mesenchymal cytokine? You know, I mean, the, you know, out of sight, out of kind. I don't, I, you know, I don't know from nothing. 
So he's uh, he's talking, and then I asked him to translate all this, and he translates it in a pretty good way. He puts it into the sort of vernacular for me, and I so he, we're talking about it back and forth. And he says, "Let's call him again." And we talked to him for another hour, and we talked to Neil Reardon and um, and Jorge, uh, and they both talked to us on the phone. And afterwards, the guy said, "You know, it doesn't sound crazy. I mean, he says it sounds kind of amazing." And he says, look at your dad, what do you got to lose? So I put him on a plane and got him down here. And, uh, you know, we shot him in the hip. We, an enormous, and they thought they had to do two hips. So they had enough for two hips, but it was so much, but they put double the amount in one hip. And then of course they just dropped some into his bloodstream, like a hundred million cells or something like that. So, but um, every ailment that this man had um, kind of righted itself and pretty quickly too. And he started walking without pain, and he he became back to his lucidity, and his kidneys were okay, and his heart and his lungs, and um, his eye, eyesight got better, and he even started getting little pigments in his hair and stuff. It was like it was insane. Okay, so that's pretty impressive to see what happened with Mel Gibson and his father in the stem cell therapy. That's seven years after. So he was 99 years old when that video was shot. Pretty impressive results, right? So the last video I want to show you, I, talk, I tend to talk to people when they come in my office for the last 25 years about what you're going to be like when you get older. You really need to think about that when you're younger because it's kind of like saving for retirement. I tell people they need to really put money in their health account, okay? Because you can save for retirement and have a lot of money when you get older, but if you don't have your health, you're going to lose that money very quickly and you're going to use your, lose your quality of life very quickly. So I like to tell people, the last 10 years of your life, what's it going to be like? Are you going to be able to move around and do the things you want? Or are you going to be bedridden and in a nursing home? The things that bring you to that point start when you're younger. When you start saving for retirement, when you're 20, you're going to have a nest egg when you get older. If you, don't, if you wait till you're 60, probably not a good chance it's going to happen unless you hit the lottery, right? Same thing with your health. If you wait, and most people do wait until they have an event, you know, their knee goes bad or their heart goes bad or something like that before they will actually take their health in consideration. What I say is start when you're young. So that when you get older, you're going to be able to have that health account full and enjoy life. So this video is just a brief video that shows the difference between somebody who does and somebody who doesn't take care of their health when they're younger. <music> It's time to decide. All right, so that's a stark contrast to what happens for people who take care of themselves when younger and people who don't. Okay, so at this point, we want to invite you to come into the office and we want you to see if you're a candidate for stem cell therapy. Again, the cost of the examination for being on the webinar or being here at the seminar is $99. And during that time, we'll answer all your questions if you have any about stem cells and how they're going to work for you. Thank you for watching this informative stem cell seminar. Please call 614-436-3870 now to schedule a free phone or video consultation with me, Dr. Brian, from the comfort and safety of your home. If you are a candidate, you receive the special $99 fee to be examined in the office. Thank you very much and make it a great day.